And today, seemingly conflicting testimony of Federal Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke with the FOMC minutes on when to wind down the stimulus will no doubt add fuel to Senator Rand Paul's proposed bill to have the Fed audited by Congress. With, his, with us right now, thoughts on the latest from the Fed, as well as an eye-opening statement yesterday at the Apple hearing. I'm joined by the junior Republican senator from Kentucky, Rand Paul. Senator, good to have you on the program. Thanks so much for joining us. Hey, glad to be with you. Well, you know, there seems to be a difference of opinion on when the end of stimulus between Ben Bernanke and the other Fed officials. What does this suggest to you that there's such a uh, division within the Fed walls? Well, you know, I, I don't even accept the notion that we should have a government stimulus. I think the best stimulus is actually just to leave more money in the hands of those who earn it, and that would mean reducing taxes. That was somewhat what the debate is about Apple. You know, Apple's one of the largest taxpayers in our country, and the uh, ever-greedy government wants more. I'd say let's spend less and tax less, and that'd be a great stimulus for the economy. Yeah, I want to ask you about that. But I think the comments you made yesterday surprised some. Others were cheered by them. They felt happy that you actually uh, took a stand on this. But but let me stick with the Fed for one more one more moment here. When you proposed your audit the Fed bill last month, you said the Fed's operations un operates under a cloak of secrecy, and it's gone on too long. If this bill passes, what do you see happening to the Fed? Well, I think there'd be more oversight, and it's the job of Congress to do oversight on uh, or agencies and organizations that we create. And basically, the Fed operates largely in secret. We get some window into what they do. But I think they also have too much power in the sense that the housing bubble was created by keeping interest rates below the market rates for such a long period of time that really we need a Federal Reserve less involved with interest rates, less involved with creating new money, less involved with devaluing our currency, because ultimately the ramifications are the boom and bust cycle that we see. Yeah, I, I guess, you know, the, the argument on the other side of that is the fact that no one's doing anything else, Senator. I mean, is the Federal Reserve basically bailing out policymakers? We don't necessarily see fiscal policy anywhere. We don't see tax reform. We don't see, you know, any real, uh, you know, moves to move the needle on unemployment. So if the Fed were, weren't there, where would we be in terms of the economy right now? Well, I think uh, we're in the middle of a recession right now that was created by Federal Reserve policy. The Federal Reserve kept interest rates well below the market rate, and you had a housing boom that showed no correction until it got wildly out of control. Normally what happens is when an economy begins to grow, you have more demand for the money, so the price of money should rise. But if you don't let the price of money respond to the demand and the increasing economic growth, then you don't get sort of the homeostasis or balance of the economy. What you get is an economy that does this until it can go no longer, but then it does this. In order to come out of a recession, you have to let prices adjust downwards. You can sell all the houses at some price, but you don't want to stimulate more home buying by more low interest rates again. So we're doing exactly what we did to get into the boom cycle, but it's hard to get into another boom cycle through the exact same mechanism when you've exhausted the boom. So yeah. that's kind of where we are now. It takes a while to grow out of a recession, but you do it much more quickly if you let prices find a bottom and then we begin to grow again. So I guess then if once the Fed steps aside, it would be a positive to see the market sell off. Would you expect the market to sell off once the Fed you know, makes it clear they are beginning the end? You know, if I knew what the market would do, I'd be in a different business, and then yeah, maybe I'd be, be wealthy, you know. But I think uh, what I do know and what I do believe is that as far as economic policy, uh, the less we intervene in the economy, the better. The more we leave money in the hands of those who earn it, the better. I believe strongly what Friedman said. And Friedman, Milton Friedman said, nobody spends somebody else's money as wisely as they spend their own. So that's why we need to leave more money in the hands of those who earn it. All right, let, let me switch gears, Senator, and ask you about Apple. I want to run the soundbite of you from yesterday uh, as a portion of your opening statement and then uh, talk a bit about it. Listen to this. I'm offended by the spectacle of dragging in executives from an American company that is not doing anything illegal. If anyone should be on trial here, it should be Congress. I frankly think the committee should apologize to Apple. I think that the Congress should be on trial here for creating a bizarre and Byzantine tax code. Well, that took, uh, that took some courage, Senator. What was the reaction from your colleagues afterwards? I don't think they were too excited about it, but I think the criticism is apt. The tax code drives people overseas. 
Money goes where it's welcome. If you make money unwelcome here by taxing it at 35% corporate tax, and Canada has a 15% tax, Canada will grow and the U.S. will shrink. The other thing is, is that worldwide companies earn money overseas. They will bring it home, but not if you tax them twice at a high rate. Most of these companies, if you would tax them at 5% to repatriate or bring money back from overseas, you would have enough to probably double the amount of money we spend on infrastructure. I proposed a permanent 5% repatriation tax and put that money into an infrastructure fund. We can't replace bridges and roads in our country. You could do it, but don't let politicians get their hands on it. Put it in an infrastructure fund where they can't spend it on something else. So, I mean, how much money do you think would come back to the, to the U.S. if, in fact, the tax law w were to be changed? When we did this in the 2004-2005 period, about $30 billion came in in taxes, but we limited how much, govern how much private companies could bring home. I say take off the limits, don't tell the companies where to spend it. They can put it in dividends, they can build a new plant. That's the decision of the private marketplace. But I promise you it would be billions upon billions of dollars in tax revenue, but probably trillions of dollars would come home in revenue for the country and for dividends and stockholders. Let, let me ask, Senator, I, I, I think you make so many good points about the money, and that's all I ever hear, by the way, from CEOs, that the tax code is broken, we're not going to move the money if we're, if we're taxed uh, double. So thank you for, for uh, being so articulate about it. I've got to ask you about this IRS scandal. Okay, you've called it un-American, and an independent commission should be put in place, and it's un-American if we don't have an independent commission put in place. Who should be on that commission, and what do you make of the fact that, uh, you know, the head of, of the agency overseeing those uh, tax-exempt groups pleads the fifth? I mean, what does this mean? Is this basically a dead end? We're not going to hear anything more about it because she pled the fifth? That's the real question, and the question is, will the Obama administration actually prosecute people? They say they're going to wait 30 days, so now we have someone taking the fifth, which implies they may have something to hide, and we have 30 days to wait. This scandal goes on for at least 30 days. It'll be in the news every day until they find somebody accountable about this. But what I would say, and the reason why I say this is un-American, is I don't care whether it's a Republican or a Democrat. I don't want anybody in charge of the IRS that chooses to go after their political opponents. And I don't care whether you're a Republican, Democrat, or independent in this country. You should be worried that a government agency as powerful as the IRS is being used for partisan pur purposes, and it should be inexcusable, and they should immediately go off the job while we're investigating it. Anybody contaminated by this scandal should be put on leave, and I do believe we should decide whether they're guilty before they're fired, but they should be put on leave. We do this all the time. If a policeman is involved with a shooting, we put them on leave. We don't suspend them. We want to determine if it was an appropriate shooting. But this is pretty serious, and I would put anybody tainted by this on leave immediately until we determine exactly who needs to go and who needs to stay. Well, how come that's not happening? Federal employees seem to be immune from firing. After Benghazi, they pleaded repeatedly for security, and nobody gave them any, and we didn't fire anybody. They transferred them around. We called them all yesterday on the phone and said, are they still there? All of them still have phones at the State Department. Nobody was fired. They just got moved around and got a new title. Government employees need to be held accountable. Senator, good to have you on the program. Thanks so much. We appreciate your Thank time you. tonight. And we'll see you soon. Thanks so right. much. Senator Thanks. Aranda Paul joining us.